Troika is a brand consulting, creative design, and content group that holds the view that brands are a company's most valuable asset and that the most enduring brands forge strong emotional bonds with audiences and supporters. To assist brands in converting audiences into ardent fans, they adopt a fan-centric perspective that guides the way they think, create, and design. Their craft is a blend of art and strategic thinking to create a holistic and meaningful brand experience that builds highly engaged, loyal audiences. Using immersive live experiences, brand partnerships, PR, social media, and influencer marketing, Mission is a communications company that helps brands stand out by interacting with consumers from a cultural perspective. We're having a dance party. I've been here in this club. Got to get the overbite in. <laughs> You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. We are chatting with our cybersecurity expert, our cybersecurity expert, Mr. Brad Ramber. Uh, we are going to talk about something I just saw. Well, I think you forwarded me this link. It's a documentary that came out in 2022, but it's getting buzz right now, well, and it's yeah. uh, their PR company is at it because it's all over the place. Lots of articles are being mm -hmm. writ written about it right now. It's called the YouTube Effect, and uh, the quote I read is, YouTube is dangerous as hell, but we still need it. Uh, and the misinformation apocalypse is coming <laughs> because of YouTube. Yeah. These are some of the, the headlines I read about it. So talk to me about the YouTube effect, the documentary, and also what you, what you think about YouTube. Well, so I'm one of those who tracks his screen time, and I typically average seven or eight hours a day. But How often do you track your screen time? Like uh, at it, the end of every day? Uh, like, no, I get, a, I think, a report weekly. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and given what I do for a living, that makes sense. Yes. If you think about YouTube, and it's an incredibly powerful tool, yes. right? Because now you've democratized somebody with an inexpensive device, can record something they need to communicate to others. The question then becomes, why do they need to communicate that? Mm -hmm. I learn a ton. Uh, what, what my kids and I are working on, we're restoring a car. Oh, I gotta figure out how to get this part installed. I don't wanna bend anything. You can typically find something. Oh, I look, I look up tutorials all the time. It's, it, it's become kind of a phone book and an mm -hmm. owner's manual yes. and, and another form of entertainment. But the trap, right, is you spend a lot of time looking at a screen. Are you being educated? Are you being entertained? Are you being irritated? Are you now irritated? You, well, yeah. Did you come up with this word? No, this okay. is all came from uh, the OJ trials. Oh, irritainment. You can't yeah. not watch it, but you right. wind up just triggered out of your yes, mind, uh -huh. and, but you keep watching, right? Yes. So there's that's one of the YouTube traps, mm -hmm. or watching any screen where somebody's presenting you content, which just because they said it doesn't mean it's rooted in fact right. Ta at which all. Which leads to the misinformation apocalypse, because yeah. anyone can say anything, and it looks really legitimate when it's on this platform. Yeah. You know, I mean, they just can have a good camera, or maybe not even a good camera, and something, some, some text at the bottom that looks like a, a news ticker at the bottom or something and can look legitimate and can say just about anything and mm -hmm. then it's believed. And then once you're in that funnel of that misinformation, the click, click, algorithm, click, 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 click. Oh, yeah. right, will feed you more. Yes. Well, it, it is exactly the social dilemma problem. It's just not talking about social media per se, but YouTube is a form of that. It's, it's disconnected. What's it's interesting is Google is, of course, the most popular website. And what's number two? YouTube. Well, and Google owns it. Well said. Yes. See, all this all this <gasps> back and forth, that. years of this, you're becoming a security expert of your Google own. paid $1.6 billion, yeah. billion dollars for YouTube in 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's probably paid off by now. You would think. Yeah. Um, here's another quote I saw it had the, as a lust for hijacking people's attention. Um, and then someone else said, I think that the, the, the um, documentarian, and I can't remember his name, Alex something, do you remember his name? Alex the documentarian. Yes, exactly. If we don't figure out this problem, we're going to lose what it means to be human, which is kind of an intense thing to say, very dramatic. There it is, Alex Winter. Well, you know what's interesting for me is uh, that we as a species, and we think about social media, and now we're talking about YouTube, we've, as a species, figured out what draws the rest of the species' attention. What do we naturally gravitate to? You know, we make jokes about squirrel or bright light, you mm -hmm. know, shiny object. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we've made a careful study of human behavior. We've now inventoried what will draw our attention to something. 
And then we're looking at how information systems can be packaged and the flashing lights on the screen can draw our attention to it. Is it irritainment? Is it entertainment? Is it education? What is it? So if I, if I miss the news and I want to catch it, there's a YouTube channel from the, the, uh, pro, the network I want to watch. I click it. I can look at it at 11 o'clock at night on demand. That's extremely powerful because mm -hmm. I'm getting content that I would trust yes. in a format I can consume when I need. And that can be for auto repair or for other forms of at least light scientific research. Yes. But if you're attracted to something that you quickly realize, oh, I don't know if there's any fact basis to this, then do you move on or do you get sucked into that and then let the algorithm take you down the bunny hole? Right? So what are some ways, is there a way to fact check slash check a resource on, uh, you know, when you're watching something and you think, uh, wow, this is fascinating. But then, you know, I kind of think, what's, what's the source? Who are these people? Can you click through, do another Google search on that person. I what really want to make a joke and say Snopes.com will help you with that, but that's not the answer. That was the I joke. do do Snopes sometimes, <laughs> but I'm like, well, who's doing Snopes? How do they know what's right? So, so you, you've tipped into the scientific method. And, and here's the thing that we, and we have to live in this, it's inescapable. If you didn't personally observe an event, and you weren't a qualified, quote unquote, educated observer of that event and aren't reaching your own conclusions, you're relying on the story told by someone else. Why do you trust them? Is it because they have a ticker at the bottom of their screen? Mm -hmm. Is it because they're wearing a necktie? Mm -hmm. Is it because they're dressed a certain way or they look a certain or way? Or they have or reached a certain amount of followers that all believe them and then you yeah. think you hop on that yeah, train. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so I guess there's not a real answer to this YouTube. I don't foresee it going away. I do think it's invaluable in many, many ways. Yeah. Um, like I have to fix something at my house. I have to yeah. Google how to fix yeah. this pipe or whatever. Uh -huh. I, I find information all the time, but I do uh -huh. think it's dangerous in certain ways so people need to kind of be aware of that. We always need to think for ourselves and question everything. I think for myself. Okay, but you mentioned something that's taking me to another point, which is the amount of time that you are you watch something, mm -hmm. screen time. Mm -hmm. That there is an awesome thing I utilize on my phone where I manage the screen time of my daughters, how long they're on their social media apps. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I turn on a code, screen time code. But I, you just sent me something saying that screen time can actually protect my phone from intruders. Yeah. So talk to me about. Well, that. just it's it's. <laughs> How you, <laughs> Banks is laughing at me. No, he's laughing at me, I no, think. Uh, no, okay. no, no, so Banks thinks I'm the deep state, right? Okay. This is what's going on here. <laughs> um, so Apple builds in increasing levels of security and monitoring for you to keep you safe. You just have to know what those are and, and really have to use them. And so yeah. the whole premise is if you want to limit certain types of use, time it and then make sure you add a code because then a human has to know something and put it in and go, okay, I know I'm going over this barrier. Do I really want to do that? Yeah, so I have to push in this code. My kids don't know it, but also intruders don't know it. And they think that just because somehow they have access to my phone, they don't know that they can't get through. It's not just screen time. Yep. I have to put that in when I'm trying to do a lot of different things sure. to my phone. Yeah. So go to screen time on your phone to protect yourself from intruders, bad mm -hmm. actors as mm -hmm. they would say. Mr. Brad Rambert, thank you for stopping by. We kind of clicked there. Good I like ring that. click. I like uh, that. Stick around you at home for more America Trends right after this quick break. We're going to dance it out. Mary's going to put her screen time code on the screen, screen here. I almost said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do that. Do we have a camera for Jay Banks? Yeah, we do. Hey. He's in his cat burglar black t-shirt today.